You'd think if there were one universe where hand protection would be critical, it would be the Star Wars universe. More hands have been lost there than Bothans have died bringing us Death Star plans, probably. You'd think then that it would be a bad idea to have a primary weapon that was ultra hot and near your hands, but apparently it's no big deal. So why don't lightsabers burn your hands off? So I've looked at lightsabers a few times now in this show. I've tried to build one, explain Kylo Ren's, explain how they could be blocked, and so on, but I've never really thought about why they don't vaporize a user's hands. Well, you all have pointed this out to me enough times, so we're gonna think about it right now. First of all, why do we think a lightsaber would destroy your hand like this? Or 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 this, or this, or this. Yes, I could go on. Well, the conception of a lightsaber is something that is extremely hot, hot enough to cut through blast doors like butter, and hot stuff heats up matter around it, so it stands to reason that something like this should kill Rey. But that lightsaber didn't kill Rey or ignite Kylo Ren's moody robes because there is a difference between temperature and heat. Try thinking of temperature as the actual movement of particles. When particles are jiggling slowly, they don't have a lot of energy in their movement, kinetic energy. A low kinetic energy means a low temperature. When they start jiggling more quickly, that kinetic energy goes up, so the temperature goes up. The average kinetic energy of particles is temperature. Heat is different. Imagine dropping one 1,000 degree lightsaber into a thousand liters of water. Nothing crazy is gonna happen, right? Maybe some bubbling or some sizzling? Now imagine dropping a thousand 1,000 degree lightsabers into that same thousand liters of water. You'd expect all of it is just gonna vaporize, right? Well, that's because even though all the lightsabers are at the same temperature, there is more lightsaber mass available to change the temperature of the water with their kinetic energies. That change is heat. If a lightsaber is to burn your hand off, it's going to be heat transfer and not necessarily temperature that does it. Wait, I'm supposed to do something right now. Surprise, Surprise lightsaber. lightsaber! Oh, right. Surprise, lightsaber! If a lightsaber is a high temperature weapon, then the particles that make up the lightsaber's blade are gonna be moving around a lot, have a lot of kinetic energy. So if I move my hand into contact with these particles, they're gonna start bumping into the particles that make up my hand and raise their average kinetic energy until the temperature goes up such that I lose my hand now. <laughs> but what if a lightsaber's particles don't interact unless there is contact? I've always thought of a lightsaber like an experimental fusion reactor called a tokamak. It uses insanely strong magnetic fields to corral 100 million degree plasma into a tight ring. Even though plasma that is hotter than the core of the sun is buzzing around the center of a tokamak, its walls don't melt. Walls that are blast door thick. And that's because of those magnetic fields which prevent high temperature particles from bumping into the walls and making them hotter. If a lightsaber had a similar containment system, then your hands would be like the tokamak's walls, relatively safe. That is true! That is possible! What about other sources of heat? From what we learned in our episode about Daenerys Targaryen's ability to get a sunburn, we know that you don't actually have to be touching hot particles to increase in temperature. Radiation can heat you up too, which is why the sun can get you hot, even though we're nowhere near it. This poorly drawn paperclip weighs more than all the plasma inside a tokamak. It doesn't take much mass to make a plasma. And with so little mass, you don't have the same amount of thermal radiation coming out from it like the sun does when it heats you up. And though the plasma inside a fusion reactor can collapse pretty easily, when it does occasionally contact the reactor's walls, there is real damage. Which means that if you had sufficiently advanced sci-fi technology, a lightsaber could both do real damage to other materials and keep a user's hands relatively safe. Probably. So, a lightsaber does not melt your hands because of intense magnetic fields which prevent high temperature particles from interacting with them. And the low mass plasma doesn't emit as much thermal radiation as you might assume. If you don't believe me, try grabbing a fluorescent light tube. Not so bad. So all in all, seems reasonable. Although, 
I think I'm just retrofitting cool sci-fi effects with science because I'm a huge nerd. Star Wars nerds are used to special editions, right? Because science. And fiction! Thank you so much for watching. This episode was the 100th episode of Because Science, so I just wanted to thank everyone for watching. We've done tens of millions of views since I started doing this little show on our bigger YouTube channel, and I cannot thank you enough. Thank you uh, for everyone who's emailed me, who's tweeted at me, and said that they've enjoyed the show or they've watched it with their kids or shown it in classrooms. That is exactly why I do this, uh, and it makes me feel so good. So um, here's to another hundred. Why do Star Wars spacecraft have different shaped wings, like X and A and U? Because when you're maneuvering in space, there is no air. It's the vacuum of space. So there's no lift or drag on your wings and they wouldn't do anything for you. It would just be the engine itself and where it was pointed. That's all it does in space. So the wings in space are useless until you enter an atmosphere. That's why you have an X-wing or an A-wing or a U-wing. If you were to go into the atmosphere of a planet, as spacecraft often do in these universes, then you're gonna need something to manipulate that airflow. And that makes more sense than probably anything else in the Star Wars universe.